When using IRR to evaluate private equity fund performance, there may be a few drawbacks. One main drawback is that it could produce a misalignment of interests between the GP and the LP. A GP almost always wants to maximize IRR because when a GP has a high RRR in a fund, it could use that as a track record to raise more follow-on funds. Now, an LP may not always want to maximize IRR. Why don't I give you an example to really show this? Let's say a private equity fund makes an investment at time zero for $100 million, and it has the option to exit this investment at time one for $150 million, or at time two for $200 million. If the private equity fund exit the investment at time one for $150 million, that would produce an IRR of 50%. Now, if the private equity fund decides to hold on to that investment and instead of selling it at time one for 150, sells it for time two for $200 million, that would produce an IRR of 41%. With the objective of maximizing IRR, the private equity fund would sell the investment at time one for $150 million. Now, let's look at it from the LP's perspective. So if I'm an investor and I have the option of receiving $150 million in time one or $200 million at time two, what would I prefer? Well, let's think about this. $150 million from time one to $200 million in time two would produce a 33% return. And as an investor in this environment, Good luck getting 33% somewhere else. So, even though the GP would prefer to sell at year one and get $150 million because that maximizes IRR, the LP, the investor, would probably prefer to hold it to time two.